There's a resource in lunar soil so valuable it could ignite a 21st century gold rush. At a reported value of $20 million per kilogram, this okay. material is roughly 150 times more valuable than gold due to its potential use in fusion power plants, cooling for quantum computers, and its current use in detecting attempted smuggling of nuclear materials for national security purposes. Seattle-based startup Interlune is one of a handful of space resource extraction companies aiming to harness this material to establish a lunar economy. It has designed a prototype to extract it from the moon's surface and a plan to bring it home. This okay. is the story of Helium-3, Helium why the yeah. moon is a good place to get it, and what that harvest might look like. There's right, a new go. space race brewing with the establishment of a long-term presence on the moon being the finish line. NASA's Artemis program is developing key infrastructure to go back to the moon and stay, which has created an <laughs> opportunity for companies like Interlune to bring their own technologies and business plans to the table. So that allows us to focus on four core technologies. We will need to excavate large volumes of lunar soil or regolith. We'll need to mechanically process that material. And then we need to separate the helium three from the other gases. The company has built a full scale prototype I think we went to the moon, excavator bro. with the help I think of so. Vermeer, I believe makers it. of industrial and agricultural machinery that is currently testing on earth. But with the moon's lower gravity, lack of atmosphere, and you but do I think that this video was real? I don't know. <laughs> like, I think we went to the moon, right? At some time we did, right? Truthfully. But I don't know. The video is weird, bro. I'm telling you. It, it just, it's just a weird video. Uh, I look at it. Um, and I'm like, I don't know, bro. It, it's kind of weird. I mean, I get it. You're jumping around and things like that. But um, I don't know, underwater, film studio, I don't know, who knows? Unique soil composition. We'll never know. There are several different factors at play I that think we've gone to the moon. to optimize for. We do the testing in full scale, we do it in, in subscale in parabolic airplanes that simulate lunar gravity, test it with simulated lunar regolith, and we also test it in vacuum. Each of those things had very important impacts on the result. Hollywood has already imagined what this could look like. Sam Rockwell starred in a sci-fi film about helium-3 mining entitled Moon. Over and out, rock and roll, God bless America. And it's portrayed as far from glamorous work. Interlune plans for its helium-3 extraction process to be completely automated, so people won't actually need to be up there working the machines. Mission control on Earth that's monitoring, uh, and in some cases taking control, teleoperating from, from Earth. Interlune's first trip to the moon is planned for next summer with Astrolab. One of the companies competing to build the lunar lander. Yeah, it kind of looks has like a that. Follow-up mission scheduled for 2027. Deliveries of helium three are set to begin in 2029, and Interlune already has agreements with companies like Maybell and Blue Force, which need helium three for building the chandelier-like dilution refrigerators that okay. cool quantum computers to near absolute zero so they can function. If you want to see a full video on how and why quantum computers need to be so ridiculously cold, let us know down in the comments. Uh, because they are overworking themselves. So we want to 10x domestic production. You want to divide that up into multiple full deliveries to manage risk and also to deliver to the supply chain when you when you have it. Interlune says it's also going to be using its helium-3 extraction process to harvest helium-3 from Earth, but Earth's supply of helium-3 is extremely limited. The primary way Earth's supply of helium-3 increases is through the decay of tritium, a radioactive isotope of hydrogen used in things like nuclear reactors, fusion reactors, and weapons. Tritium itself is also very scarce and expensive, costing right. tens of thousands of dollars per gram. On the other hand, the helium-3 on the moon was made by the sun and deposited on the lunar surface via the solar wind over billions of years. So okay, so guys, this definitely, whatever this is that we're encountering, I have no idea, right? But, this, but I want to point out here, this is probably where you should probably be investing, okay? Because it definitely looks like pure profit nearly pure profit obviously once we get past the uh the transportation and things like that uh, of these things right who knows maybe we could just shoot it from out of space i don't know from, from i don't know how this is going to work here guys um but i do definitely think that this is going to be something that's probably going to be be very interesting to encounter um i know that um the like helium 3 can be used to like you can inhale it almost right like if you're going to get like an mri specifically uh, you inhale the helium-3 or something like that, and then you get an MRI, and then it can, like, accurately map your lungs and things like that. Like, so you can see exactly what's happening with your lungs. 
Um, I think that's the the main usage for helium three. I think that I, I kind of know of at least right now. Um, then obviously the 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 idea of like um, the cooling quantum computers and things like that that makes sense. Solar wind is a stream of charged particles emitted by the sun that can cause damage to earthly technologies. But it's like not just grids, helium three there, guys. A lot of rare earth minerals networks. are going to be there. Earth's magnetic field acts like a powerful shield against the solar wind, which benefits us in many ways but it is also part of what makes helium-3 so scarce and valuable here on Earth. Once we have a fleet of harvesters on the moon that's extracting helium-3, we wanna go get other things. We wanna go get propellant, like water, and make rocket propellant. We wanna get rare earth metals. That's not our go-to-market, is because the uh -huh. only thing that's expensive enough to warrant going to space and bring it back to Earth is helium-3 right now. We right. wanna use that to start an in-space economy. Interlune says it considers its extraction process harvesting instead of mining. Ideally, we'd like to take out the valuable helium-3, put the material back in the trench, and leave it looking like a tilled field. Other countries and companies are also expressing interest in the moon's helium-3 reserves. Of course. The Chinese Lunar Exploration Program has returned helium-3 from the moon with plans to go back. Japanese company iSpace is also focused on extracting helium-3 from the lunar soil. But the law, the, the Space Resources Act of 2015, says that a U.S. flagged company can go to the moon or any planetary body, extract okay. resources and bring them back to Earth to sell. The key is that um, that we move quickly enough to establish our right to operate. Other countries are going to go, and they're going to establish a presence. If we don't get there in a reasonable time frame, we could we could lose our right to operate on our moon. What do you think about the race to mine helium? Well, it's not our moon, but it's everyone's moon. But let's hold on. Um, <laughs> I see what you did there, right? On our moon. America's moon is the world's moon. So here's the thing. Let, let's call, let's think of the moon specifically as, I don't know, into the international waters in the ocean. Let's just say that there. Let's call it that. Um, anyone who's going to go there is going to go there. And I'm going to go ahead and forecast it. Um, but I'm going to forecast that it is going to probably be either India or China who kind of gets there first. We've, we have, like, as a whole, as a nation at least, uh, kind of have given up on... Um, like space travel and things like that. I mean, a lot of our space programs now are basically privatized. You have Blue Origin, you know, you have uh, Elon Musk's company specifically also. Like these companies are still functioning. Um, everything has become basically privatized. So um, no matter who chooses to do anything, it's going to be Elon Musk that gets even richer. <laughs> um, because he's the one that has all the rockets. He is the one, he's the one that has all the technology that, um, that can kind of move things large scale, right? Um, and obviously, there are other places around the world, but I do think that it's probably going to end up being um, probably India or China specifically, because they're the ones who are still kind of making moves uh, uh, to, to do things out there, guys. But um, Helium-3, there we go, guys. Um, we need it. Uh, it's going to make a lot of people very wealthy, uh, specifically if you could find the exact ticker symbol, <laughs> right? Um for the company that's actually going to be kind of utilizing um, helium three, four things and, and make and bringing it to market at least, uh, at least the American company. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm at. I mean, the idea of space force is, is funny to me. Um, if, if it does kind of come to fruition, cool. If it doesn't, a private company will do it. Guys, do you want to watch movies with me? I never actually thought to like promote it over here, guys. But if you guys do want to watch it, guys, we have hundreds of movies. And I mean hundreds of movies that we've reacted to. You guys can come watching with me if you want to, uh, along with um, you know many TV shows. Currently, we're working on the show Dexter, uh, along with uh, Vikings. And we have a lot of series that are already completed. But if you guys do want to watch it with me, the link is in the description. Everything's available at the second tier. But of course, if that's not your thing, guys, don't worry. Right? Listen, like and subscribe.